with his threats against North Korea, and China is not going to rein in North Korea, but with those threats, Trump, Trump could take place or could take uh, action against North Korea very soon, and it could have World War III consequences. I'm very, very concerned. Gorsuch uh, was just approved to the Supreme Court. I guess they used the nuclear option to get that done, only needing 51 votes. We'll have details of that for you. We can put the article uh, on screen for any uh, TV viewers that are out there watching us. If you're a radio listener, you can always tune in uh, via uh, Infowars.com forward slash show. But there it is. Neil Gorsuch confirmed by Senate as Supreme Court Justice. And we'll scroll down and uh, read some of that article for, again, the TV viewers. Uh, Judge Neil M. Gorsuch was confirmed by the Senate on Friday to become the 113th Justice of the Supreme Court, uh, capping a political brawl that lasted for more than a year and tested constitutional norms inside the Capitol, fraying upper chamber. The development was a signal uh, triumph for President Trump, or single triumph campaign last year, uh, rested in large part on his pledge to appoint another committed conservative to succeed Justice Anthony Scalia, who died in February 2016, very suspiciously, I should add. Let me just stop right there because I want to go to our next guest, and I'm going to punch out for a while, work on some things, and come back, David. I'll, I'll leave everybody here with able hands. I'll be back this Sunday, of course, 4 to 6 p.m. Uh, live. But it's not Hillary picking the Supreme Court, and I know folks that were involved with Trump he had a computer with the most conservative votes and had a bunch of big firms look at it, three different firms. And he wanted to put in Napolitano later, but said, well, I guess you're not on the list. You'll have to be the second round. That's big news for folks, but I'll just tell you. So bigger economy, control the border, a lot of good stuff happening, but neocons and Al-Qaeda celebrating what happened in Syria, a clear false flag. Joel Skousen was on with us the day it happened. We had reporters on the ground, absolutely a false flag. Ron Paul, 100% false flag. He's never that sure. Rand Paul, I mean, the, the same group's been caught staging it. Why would Assad, right as he's winning, right as the U.S. is defeating al-Qaeda and ISIS, pushing them into Iraq in a pincer attack from the east and the west, why would he do the one thing that's the red line for Trump? Trump knows that, so it makes him look good with the Chinese president. Now he doesn't look like he's allied with Russia. Maybe it opens up to taunt a very Machiavelli move. I understand Machiavellian systems, but I just, they always turn to evil, like the Ring of Mordor, to use a parable from Lord of the Rings. It, it'll give you the power to win, but only a couple moves. Then it brings in the curse, just like Nazi Germany or anything else. So Joel Skousen, former Marine Corps fighter pilot, uh, uh, naval aviator, a military officer in the Marine Corps, and of course one of the leading Patriot families for almost 70 years fighting the globalist. And so he's got all the sources. We'll get his take. And David, you take over. I know David is chomping at the bit right. here. Uh, so Joel Scalzi, good to have you here. Good to be with you, Alex and David. Well, you've heard my ranting. You've heard my analysis and David's perhaps. What's your take on the current situation? Well, I'm frankly going to have to disagree with the pro proposition that Trump hasn't bought into this. I think he's been totally snookered by this uh, false flag incident and uh, I have read every statement. I don't care whether he's on the teleprompter or speaking off the cuff. Yeah, I can see, you know, complete buying into this on his part. And this is a very sad story because it means, I mean, when his meeting with at uh, Mar del Lago with uh, Bannon, uh, Bannon was totally for the strike on Syria. You just cannot explain this by Machiavellian techniques saying, I'm going to go out and destroy people just so that I can, uh, you know, advance. Uh, I'm just very frustrated by the fact that uh, Donald Trump... Sure, well, Trump I'm not endorsing Machiavelli. I see how this actually works for him. And so I don't even think the neocons and stuff realize was just what's happened. But you're saying he believes his general so much, you may be right. He has a love affair with the military that they may have given him fake intelligence? Absolutely. They assured him. And McMaster's assured him. Absolutely. This was the Syrians that did it. And you know what What they failed to, to see, and which has come out from the Russians, which is very, very good intelligence, is that... The Syrians had stockpiled uh, chemical weapons in this arms factory, and it was a secondary explosion from the attack from the Syrians on the arms factory. The Syrians didn't know that there were chemical weapons there, but it wasn't technically a false flag attack, meaning that the Syrians didn't explode, the uh, rebels didn't explode the weapons, trying to blame it. It just simply got caught up in the attack on their arms factory. So this surprised the globalists. This is something they had to move a crisis and take advantage of it right off the cuff because this was not a planned 
false flag attack. It turns out to be a false attribution to Assad. And I covered in this in today's World Affairs Brief all the history of the false accusations of Assad using chemical weapons, how chemical weapons are a broad-based area weapon that are never used, never in military tactics, used in a close urban conflict situation with civilians because it's non-discriminatory. There's no way with Assad knowing that the, the establishment is looking for a way to kill him, to blame him, that he would use chemical weapons where there's no military advantage to do so. I just can't believe that none of the military experts on television have brought this up. It's just a cover-up uh, of massive proportions. But I'm frankly worried that once Trump gets on this bandwagon and say, I'm going to attack, he goes through with it. And so I'm thinking that with his threats against North Korea, and China is not going to reign in North Korea, but with those threats, Trump, Trump could take place or could take uh, action against North Korea very soon, and it could have World War III consequences. I'm very, very concerned. You know, Joel, uh, this is David Knight. Uh, Alex Jones is gone now. We'll, we'll finish up this interview together. When you said that you, you were concerned that uh, Donald Trump had bought into this, I am too, because what we've seen is a pattern of Donald Trump going out and getting the people that he believes are experts in all these different fields and then stepping back and saying, I'm going to approach this from a pragmatic standpoint. I'm not ideological about this and, and let them take the lead on this. And of course, Michael Savage has said, look, th these are the generals now that are leading us into this escalated conflict, this escalated conflict and uh, regime change in Syria, escalation of the Cold War with Russia. He said we saw the same thing with Woodrow Wilson and uh, pushing this type of agenda. Somebody who uh, came in saying, well, I'm going to put America first and whatever we're going to and then turn into a, a globalist. That's what I'm really concerned concerned about. But you said one thing that I thought was interesting uh, in terms of the way the attack came out. We talked to Syria girl yesterday and she was saying that a day prior to the Gulf ba to the attack, Gulf based Orient TV announced, quote, tomorrow we are launching a media campaign to cover the airstrikes on Hama countryside, including the usage of chemical warfare against civilians. I mean, they're tipping this out a day ahead of time. We see that there's not going to be any forensic investigation. There's not going to be any debate in Congress. Instead, they move immediately with a solution that they have pre-planned. This is what looks like so much like a false flag. I have people uh, pushing back when I talk about this on Twitter saying, you see everything is a false flag. It's like, well, when they talk about it uh, in advance and say tomorrow this is going to happen and they've already got a pre-planned solution, they've already identified the culprit when you can't identify somebody that quickly uh, that's the thing that concerns me it's it's got uh, these types of deliberate fingerprints all over it well I, I published that to report from Infowars in today's world affairs brief um, that they had foreknowledge of that but the only solution you know as a military analyst on that to, it would be to say that they have to wait because they had video of seeing the aircraft, the Syrian aircraft come in, dropping their bombs, and then the chemical weapons exploding. You know, either they had to time it where they set these off manually in, in concert with the coming attack, which perhaps they knew about. Perhaps they were inducing this attack and planned to blow this up. But that's a tricky uh, thing to do from a military standpoint. I think it's much more plausible uh, to believe that that foreknowledge referred to the fact we know they're going to attack our arms factory and in the process those chemical weapons are going to blow up mm -hmm. and it's going to cause a massive amount of deaths and that's what I, I really see. think happened. I agree. Now, in, in terms of the justification, we saw Donald Trump and Nikki Haley talking about babies and so forth, and we've seen this all with the first uh, Gulf War, and uh, that was false, the fact that ba we were told babies were being taken out of uh, incubators by an evil dictator, and then we found out that that was uh, entirely rigged. We talk about Donald Trump said uh, the slow, agonizing death. Well, you know, we had a half a million children die of slow, agonizing deaths, and uh, that was our sanctions against Iraq. We also have the uh, the uh, example that we had in Stockholm today of uh, what is going to really be the consequences of this in the long term. You want to speak to that and, and talk about also what you think is going to happen, wh what effect this is going to have on our relationship with Russia. Well, let's talk about the Russia thing, too. Now, Trump, of course, as you know, did warn the Russians in advance. Uh, this was to avoid too many casualties or any casualties all, all, all among the Russian advisors. So he didn't want to have an escalation of this conflict. What that indicates, and it also ended up meaning very few Syrian casualties, although there were some uh, involved in this. But what it means is that Trump wanted to make a statement rather than start a war. 
Um, and of course, the Russian reaction with this is to cut off any coordination on air uh, support uh, for this uh, war in Syria. They're also bringing in more anti-aircraft systems. You know, I wondered, first of all, why didn't Russia respond knowing in advance? Why didn't they shoot down any of these uh, uh, Tomahawk missiles? Yeah. I mean, the U.S. threw 59 of them at this air base. That I knew from a military pilot preserve. That's really overkill. These things are over a million dollars a piece. Yeah, one and a half million dollars. That's uh, about 90 million dollars that he spent there. I guess we should all go out and get some stock in Raytheon right now. They're going to go uh, shooting up. They'll be replacing these. Well, here's my take on this. They are. Those Tomahawk missiles aren't being produced anymore. And I think they do have accuracy problems. So I think in one aspect, there's two aspects, but one is that they wanted to use up existing inventory, so they threw nearly <laughs> 60 of these things out. Secondly, they knew that Russia's S-400 system has very expensive interceptors. They don't have 60 reloads for those S-400 systems. And so they wanted to send a barrage in there so that Russia would say, hey, we can't possibly stop this attack. We're going to let it fall. Interestingly, Russia has documented that most of those cruise missiles missed their target. They only end up destroying th three MiG-23 jets, wow. and those were under repair. So essentially it was a net negative. They didn't even crater the runway. That's so what happens when you do wag the dog. We're talking to Joel Skousen. Let's go to Devon in Florida. Devon in Florida, you're on the air. Great, hey, thank you so much. Listen, I have bought your products, and I gotta say, they're amazing. Thank Anyone you. who's on the fence, buy it, because I've, I've got Caveman, Superman Vitality, Secret 12, Vitamin Mineral Fusion, I've got the body armor. Wow, thank you. Wow. You're I the mean, top of the list that makes it all possible. Which nutraceutical so, does you like best? I really like the, the Vitamin Mineral Fusion, to be honest. That's it's amazing. Really incredible. I drank it in the morning, and I swear to you, I felt incredible. Like, I haven't felt weak. My morning was fantastic, and I and I love you guys. I love the info. Wars crew, and I just want to, yeah, I want to, I want to take this opportunity to tell anybody out there who's on the fence, just buy it. You will love it. I'm telling you, I've never bought a bad product. What you find in our news is the same thing you find in our products at InfoWarsLife.com. It's a win-win, InfoWarsLife.com.